When it comes to road racing bikes, the Scott Addict is an icon. The original 2007 Addict was claimed to be the lightest production frame in the world at the time. Since then, it's been raced and won at countless World Tour races and has established itself as one of the best all-rounders in the peloton. The Merida Sculpture, on the other hand, is a bike that not everyone will be as familiar with. Though Merida has been making bicycles for over 50 years, it only made its World Tour debut relatively recently in 2013. Since this most recent Sculpture was revealed last summer, it's already been ridden to significant victories at the biggest races in the world, including the 2022 edition of Milan San Remo, where Matej Mohoric famously used a dropper post to help him distance the other favourites on the descent off the Poggio. Both bikes occupy the lightweight all-rounder space with full carbon frame sets, aero tubes, integrated cable routing and fast reactive handling. As part of our annual Bike of the Year tests, I pitted these two head-to-head -to, -head to find out which one is best. But before we dive into that, a quick reminder to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more in-depth, independent bike reviews like this. The exact models that I tested are the Merida Sculptura Team, which costs £8,000, and the Scott Addict RC10, which costs £5,949. As I'm sure some of you will be keen to point out in the comments, the two builds aren't exact matches for each other in terms of pricing or specification, but rest assured I did take that into account during testing, and we'll dig a little deeper into how those differences play out on the road throughout this video. Even we here at Bike Radar aren't immune to availability issues after all. The latest Scott Addict RC shakes up the formula significantly. Rim brakes, skinny tyres and round tubes are out, while hydraulic disc brakes, wider tyres, truncated aerofoil tube shapes, drop seat stays and integrated cable routing are in. The new Maria Sculptura, meanwhile, is the archetypal World Tour race bike aero tubes, long and low geometry, drop seat stays, and an integrated full carbon handlebar. It's got it all. Overall then, the frame sets have a lot of similarities at first glance. On the scales, there's an 800 gram weight difference between these two bikes, with the Sculptura team weighing just 7.1 kilos and the slightly cheaper Addict RC10 coming in at 7.9 kilos. Much of that can be attributed to the slightly lower spec build on the Scott Addict RC10 rather than the frame sets alone though. Both come in around the 1.2kg mark for the frame and fork combined. If you go up to the next model in the Addict RC range, the Addict RC Pro, which matches the Sculptura team's price and spec more closely, that closes the gap to around 150 grams. That's still just over the UCI's 6.8 kilo weight limit, but unless you're only interested in hill climbs, then both of these bikes are going to be faster than the older, lighter rim brake equivalents. However, if you are only interested in hill climbs, then you can click on the card to watch our Hill Climb Diary series right now. The biggest differences between these two bikes, though, comes in how they feel out on the road. The geometry of the Sculptura is a little bit more aggressive than that of the Addict RC, with steeper angles, a tighter wheelbase and a lower front end. All in all, it just feels that little bit more nimble and responsive. On the other hand, the Addict RC is a race bike that I would describe as well-mannered and predictable. It doesn't feel like you're riding on edge at all times, instead it's smooth, a little bit more upright and balances its responsiveness with slightly slower handling. Now, that's not to say that the Sculptura is necessarily better in that respect. Having more aggressive handling isn't always best for everyone and every situation, and it really depends on the type of riding that you want to do. Personally, I really like the nimble handling of the Sculptura, and it's a perfect fit for all of the short, sharp climbs and twisty roads around South Bristol. But, if I was choosing a bike for long days in the mountains with lots of fast ascending and sweeping turns, then maybe the Addict might be the better pick. Now, despite having bucket loads of stiffness under pedaling, both bikes actually offer plenty of rear end comfort. 
The Addix RC uses a proprietary D-shaped seat post, while the Scultura uses a standard round 27.2mm seat post. Again, both have their advantages and disadvantages. The Addix D-shaped post should be a little bit more aerodynamically efficient, but it obviously means you can only use the specific seat posts which are designed for this bike by Scott. The round seat post on the Scultura, on the other hand, sacrifices a little bit of aero performance, but means you should be able to always find a replacement if you need one, or if you just want to try out something else that comes as stock, whether that's a seat post with a different amount of setback, or even a dropper post. At the other end of the bike, the Scultura team comes with a fully integrated carbon handlebar. It's a great piece of kit, however, it does mean that adjusting the fit of the bike is very tricky. Now, Marita says the Team SL 1P integrated cockpit can be purchased separately in 15 different sizes, but there are only three choices of handlebar width and fans of narrow handlebars, such as myself, aren't covered. However, the fork does have a round 31.8mm steerer tube and the cable routing system uses one designed by FSA, so fortunately you can swap out the integrated handlebar for a non-integrated option if you want to. On the Addict RC10, you get a non-integrated cockpit with a separate bar and stem. The more expensive Addict RC Pro does get a fully integrated cockpit, but I think this non-integrated setup is going to be better for most people. It is a little heavier and less aero, but it affords you far greater adjustability. And the stem even has a clever way of routing the cables that enables you to swap it out for a different size without needing to disconnect any cables or brake hoses. As expected at these price points, the group sets on both bikes are excellent. The Addict RC10 SRAM Force ETAP Axis group set isn't the lightest available, but it functions exceptionally well, and I really like the double tap shifting arrangement. On the Scultura team, we have the new 12 speed Dura Ace R9200, and as we've said a few times on this channel already, it is an incredibly impressive group set. The shifting is super snappy at both the front and the rear and I like the changes to the shifter shapes as well as the new wider gear ranges. I'm also quite pleased to see Shimano sticking with an 11 tooth smallest cog on the cassettes and bigger chain rings up front as these are slightly better from an efficiency point of view. The only question is, do you actually need Durace or would you be better off buying the cheaper Scultura 9000 and pocketing the £2,050 difference? We recently released our in-depth video review of the new 12-speed Ortega Di2 group set, and our senior technical editor, Warren Roster, says it offers the same mechanical, electronic and braking performance as the new Dura Ace for a lot less money. Ultimately, that's going to be a personal decision, but if you want to watch our in-depth review of the new Ortega Di2 R8170 group set, click on the link in the video description below. That aside, it's great to see that both of these bikes include a power meter as standard too. The Addict RC10 has a SRAM Force Axis power meter which uses Quark internals. Now, I reviewed a Quark D4 power meter last year, we put a link to that review in the video description below, and I was really impressed by its accuracy and its reliability, and I have every confidence the Force Axis version will be just as good. Unfortunately, I haven't had enough time with the new Dura Ace power meter to come to any definitive conclusions about its accuracy and reliability, so I can't comment on that yet, but watch this space for a full in-depth review of that power meter in the future. The Merida has a set of Vision Metron 45 SL disc wheels shod with 28C Continental GP5000 clinchers, though Merida says that 2022 bikes should come with GP5000 STR tyres going forward. Either way, it's a super fast, race-ready combination, and at a claimed weight of just under 1400 grams for the wheel set alone, it's a pretty light combination too. On the Scott, you get a set of Syncross Capital 1.0 35 disc wheels and 28C Shrulby 1 TLE tires. Despite the shallower rims, the Capital wheels are actually around 200 grams heavier per set than the Vision Metrons on the Scultura and the Schwalbe tyres have around 50% more rolling resistance than the Continental GP5000s, according to testing by BicycleRollingResistance.com. Overall, they're fine, but they're not as rapid as the setup on the Scultura, and if the Addict were my bike, I would be looking to upgrade the tyres straight away. That said, this is an area where it is slightly unfair to compare the two builds like for like, as the £8,149 Addict RC Pro mentioned earlier 
does get a significant upgrade in this area. That build comes with a set of Zip 303S wheels and Schwalbe Pro 1 TLE tyres and would likely offer much improved performance over what's spec on the Addict RC10. The only downside to the Addict RC Pro build is that it doesn't come with a power meter, so the Merida arguably still beats it on value. Now in terms of tyre clearance, the Scott officially maxes out at 700 times 28 c there's a bit of extra room, so it will be possible to push that slightly, but it does lag behind the Merida, which has clearance for at least 700 times 30 c tires. The max clearance on both bikes is fine for the type of fast riding they're designed for, but it is nice to have that bit of extra space available on the Merida if you ever want to do any rides on particularly rough roads. Beyond that, the trend for road wheels and tyres is still getting wider, so it's possible that while 25 to 28 c is standard now, those might feel a little bit slim in a few years, and having that extra bit of clearance available on your bike might help future-proof it to a certain extent. To wrap things up then, both the Scott Addict and the Merida Sculptura are excellent, lightweight, all-rounder road bikes. Both have excellent frame sets, fantastic handling, and are available in a number of well-thought-out builds. But this is a head-to-head -head review, so which comes out on top? Well, all things considered, the Sculptura just edges it for me. I really enjoyed the slightly more reactive handling and it's very difficult to overlook just how good value it is. That little bit of extra tyre clearance is also something I'd want to, as it should help the bike stay relevant for a little bit longer. Would I personally buy this specific Sculptura team build? No. For a start, I can't afford it. As good as the new Dura Ace is, I just don't think I could justify the price difference over the Sculptura 9000 with Ultegra Di2, especially as that build also comes with a non-integrated cockpit, meaning that I could customise it to my heart's content. What do you think though? Would the Merida Sculptura be your weapon of choice, or would you prefer the Scott Addict RC? As always, let us know what you think in the comments below, and if you haven't already, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon so every time we upload a new video, you'll get a notification.